Jessica Mowboy with Give You Love, and welcome back. It's the Country Viewpoint here on Flow FM. Well, we're going back to Dan Crouch's conversation from yesterday with Ann Webster, the member for Mali. Still lots to be discussed in their agenda, so we'll play you part two of that now. The Wim Avon Bank Mine and VHM Goshen at Lulbert. Can you provide a bit of a further update on the mineral sands mining in Mali and the need for the social licence that you mentioned earlier and where that all stands as of now as the year draws to a close? Yeah, look, uh, again, you're right. The social licence factor is critical. If government or big business uh, want to see mineral sands take place for the renewable. This is all about renewables and it's also about exporting all of that mineral sand, so all the goodies from our earth over to China for them to manufacture into solar panels, into batteries, into wind turbines and let us not make any mistake into defence um, artillery then we need to have a really strong think about how this has all been planned, how it's all been set up, and communities where farms are going to be seriously disrupted. So the production of agriculture, for example, WIM in Avon Bank, uh, there are many farmers down there at Doohan who are deeply upset that their properties are being... um, closed off to them, to their families. You know, there's a 150-year-old homestead where the young family members, like sixth, seventh generation, are in that house right now. They have been told they need to move out of that house for 36 years. I don't know that anybody's going to take that news well. Somebody told me that I need to get out of my house for 36 years. Um, I absolutely would be objecting. So... Um, there are issues around how the social licence has been um, sought, the kind of consulting uh, that has occurred, and then, of course, um, how we proceed from here. So Avon Bank has certainly got its detractors, and uh, WIM are the ones who need to uh, provide the answers. And then we go to VHM Goshen, Uh, where I'm going today. Actually, I'll be jumping in the car shortly to hit the road and meet with uh, VHM, the mining company itself, and and then locals who are not happy about it. And, you know, again, these big companies need to provide the assurance to communities that um, their properties will be compensated appropriately, that um, they will only be disturbing the soil for a short period of time, and that they are protecting the topsoil so that it is put back on once they're done. So the rehabilitation of that land so that farming can continue um, is incredibly important. So there are answers that VHM need to be able to give confidence to the local community will occur. And uh, then, you know, local communities have a right to, to object or to, uh, to support it. Um, and appropriate um, um, reimbursement, if you like, for those losses should be given the compensation. So, yeah, look, there's a lot. There's a lot to answer. I'll be very interested in the meeting today and uh, meeting with the council, of course, and um, members of leadership in the community. And uh, yeah, everyone needs to be on the same page. Ann Webster, the Nationals member for Mali, speaking to Dan Crouch. We'll play you the remainder of their very lengthy conversation when we return in a few short moments here on The Country Viewpoint in our second hour. Don't go anywhere. That was the song Silent Night by Alive City, and welcome back. It's The Country Viewpoint here on Flow FM. Time to take you back to Dan Crouch's conversation from yesterday with Ann Webster, the Nationals member for Mali. AEMO's transmission lines still very much front and centre of Ann Webster's energy and focus. So back to that conversation now between Dan Crouch and Ann Webster, the member for Mali, and the final one for 2023. AMO's draft integrated systems plan, which... Uh, states that coal is set to be retired five years earlier than expected. From people in your region that you've been speaking to, what's the general vibe on this? Uh, look, the general vibe, and, and I remind your listeners and you, Dan, that I'd sent out a bigger survey some months ago now, 
around October to find out how people um, felt uh, regarding the renewables, well, the rush to renewables, because under Chris Bowen, there is definitely a railroading of regional communities where uh, these renewable projects, the wind farms, the solar farms and the transmission lines are taking place. It is basically happening all in Mali. Um, surprise, surprise, not a Labor seat, a national seat. And so, you know, their air of concern is pretty minor in, um, in the big picture. AEMO uh, has now said, well, we're running behind time and we really want to close down all coal-fired power stations by 2038 rather than five years later. Um, and let's remember the targets that Labor have set. For example, 82% renewables by 2030. That's an in-house target. There is nothing that Australia has agreed to on a global scale, not at COP26 um, or 7 or even 8, where we have agreed and signed up Australia. It's not like the Paris Agreement. And so there does not need to be this rush and especially when we provide less than 1% of the world's uh, carbon emissions, I think we are heading down an incredibly dangerous place. Uh, most people are aware of this. They're worried about it because it's our productivity that is uh, challenged and I would say absolutely under threat. And it's productivity that we need to improve, whether you're talking about inflation um, and the, the inflation rate, it's productivity that will get us out of this, not um, standard higher wages that just simply cause prices to go up. That is not going to fix our productivity. And uh, when you're going to rush to renewables, entirely reliant on China, mind you, in order to achieve those goals in terms of wind, wind turbines, in terms of solar panels, in terms of battery manufacturing, uh, there just needs to be a realistic view of where we're going. And I can tell you right now, in the coalition, we don't buy it. And uh, we are totally committed to heading down the nuclear path, not as a complete picture, but certainly as providing the base load um, reliable power that is affordable and sustainable into the future. Lots of big issues there and no doubt a lot of them will come into this next answer, but what are your top priorities getting into 2024? Yeah, look, 2024, I think um, if we don't have an election, we'll be heading towards an election. My own uh, priorities are around regional health um, policy work and I've got policies that I've developed from uh, a lot of consultation with industry across Mali but beyond Mali as well. I was in New South Wales, Cox Harbour area a couple of weeks ago and um, I hear much the same thing. So we have developed policy and it has now gone to the Parliamentary Budget Office for costing. Um, so that is a very Im important step forward. I have two more major pieces of policy which I'm wanting to tidy up and sort and send as well. And uh, then of course we'll be starting to hammer out and publicise all of that policy moving forward. So regional health, the fact that people cannot get the health workforce, the services that they need, is it's just wrong and uh, it needs a serious and a focused fight to ensure that regional areas are not the last areas that get serviced but rather are put as a priority moving forward. And uh, that includes long-term, medium and short-term solutions. So that is very much on my radar. Dr Ann Webster, thank you very much for checking in with us on Flow FM. Hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and we look forward to catching up with you again in the new year. Thank you so much, Dan, and you have a Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas to all of your listeners. You're listening to The Country Viewpoint on Flow FM, third hour coming your way soon. Don't go anywhere.